Thunder. We hear it salute. Crazy day. <laughs> yeah, very. And um, croaky. <laughs> Two right, <laughs> right. Well, I, I, you, you've got a copy of Open Combat. That's uh, right. With the new rules that you guys have put out. Yep. Tell us all about it. Open Combat, it's a universal uh, skirmish system, uh, pre gunpowder. So, essentially, uh, what it allows you to do is to play games in fantasy or historical, as long as it's pre gunpowder. And the key thing is, different to other games, you start up the models in any way you choose. Okay. So, well, there are sample profiles within the book. So, you know, an idea of an elf or a dwarf or a Roman legionary or Saxon. Um, but the core, core part of the game is what you start with is in traditional games you have that points value that you play against. Yes, yes. So, in, in open combat, you'd agree a, a renown level. Uh, and that renown pool, so if you chose 100 renown, that pool of points you then spend on a one for one basis to build the profiles. So, when I say a one for one basis, if you put four points of renown into speed, uh, that gives you four inches of movement, and that's four points towards the value of that model. Yeah. Okay. So then you add, you, you then might have six points in attack, and then another four points in defense. And, and one for one, you go along, and at the end of it, once you've put your weapons and abilities in there, all for one point, and you've added them all together, the final value will be the renown level of that model. So you've, you've created your stat line the way you want it to be. Okay, so uh, it's very much like what, one for one. It's one for one, yeah, it's a totally yeah. flat system, so you can create whatever you want. Uh, and on the basis of that, I mean, some people have said, well, what, you know, I'm playing a game, and that guy's dwarf is exactly the same as my troll. You know, and yeah. it's like, well... You that's not a problem because yeah. you know they've literally met their match and we see it in uh, in uh, movies and we see it in novels where things that you wouldn't expect to have a chance against something because narratively it's cool yeah. that little dude has just taken that big dude down you know and that's fine and, and that, you can get that in your games by having that freedom to do your own thing you can you can create your own little cinematic moments within your games it's like suddenly that halfling is taking that, and that big guy down because he's that hero you know he's the hero of the moment and it, it's a different approach because traditionally we're, we are in, in wargaming we're very often presented with a profile that yes. is this is a dwarf or this is a Roman you know or Roman legionary or whatever so we're open to and giving the players the opportunity to do it their way so if you want to you can have a warband that's got loads of the same values on everyone you know they're all very similar whereas for those of us that like experimenting you can have a really heroic guy a really poor guy a really fast guy a guy that's pretty good with a bow and you know you can create a more narrative kind of uh, approach to warband creation and Sorry, I uh, carry on. Is, it, is it a D6 system as well? Yeah, in, yeah. In all, all you need is 3D6. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we have got custom dice. Uh, the custom faces are there purely as a shorthand for um, referencing to rules. So, for instance, within the, the combat mechanism, there's uh, a force back rule and there is uh, minor hits and uh, solid hits. And the custom dice have simply got little icons on them that, that show you and give you a shorthand because yeah. there's a little shield on some of them to tell you, to remind you that if you're playing and the models have got a shield, then that has an influence on the result. So, they're not necessary, but we're all gamers, we like cool dice, so you know, you can. You can play with it, so it's you know. How, how long did it take you guys to put the actual rules set together? I mean, uh, it's like <laughs> my, my lifelong war games uh, thing yeah, from the year. Yeah. Doctor, I mean, it? I've been playing war games for 30 years now. Um, I I worked. I was lucky enough to work at GW many years ago. Brilliant. You know, Brilliant. Early 90s. Yeah, Gav Thorpe's on the stand. Yes, yeah, it's yes. an old friend from back in the you know, back of the day. Uh, so yeah, we. Uh, we, open combat has existed since about 2011, uh, and that grew out of me tinkering with the system and just going on about it to Gav every now and again. And then Gav eventually get fed up on me and said, "Well, write it then." You know, and so, 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 so I wrote it. <laughs> so then you guys were just batting on a table in Bugmans and around and all that. Oh kind no, of it was in Bugmans. Oh no, why are you at each other's house? Wow, this wow, was just gosh. Actually, you know, bizarrely, you know, we're at sleep now, but it was at triples in 2011 that initially. I kind of thought about doing it properly. You know, okay. Because like, okay. we've been walking around just buying cool figures. Yeah, yeah. With no particular reason. It was just like, we just like cool figures. And this is a system that allows you, as a collector, to go to Hassle Free or Heresy or wherever and cherry pick the cool figures that you like yes. and then stack them up and do them how you, you almost like a role playing game. This is a tabletop skirmish game. You know? Definitely. I, I, can, I can make you see the appeal of having the figures you want to play yeah, with. Yeah, you're not tied to anything. So if you like particular ranges or you like particular models within a range, you don't have to sink a load of money into that game yes. just to play with that figure because actually you're not that bothered about the rest of the range. You can just go, I'll have that one. 
you know, as miniature collectors, it allows us a bit of freedom, but also for gamers that are miniature collectors, you know, it's, we all have our own ways of doing things, you know, and, that, and one of the key things with, the, with Open Combat being so open and allowing you that flexibility is to put the power back into gamers, to just, because yeah. we're all really creative, you know, people forget that, it's a creative hobby, and it allows us to do what we want to do with our hobby, and the framework is balanced, so it doesn't matter what your position is, or what you think things should be, or what your opponent thinks, the game works regardless, so you, and you can just have fun with your cool thoughts of what you think is, you know. And the book's also got rules for terrain and you can create hazards, so you can create any kind of fantastical area you like, or uh, if it's a historical one, you can create one with the relevant uh, hazards that might be on the tabletop yes, at yes. that point, you know. So the, the, it's, a, it's a toolkit, essentially, to do what you want to do, um, rather than telling you this is how it is. It's, this is how you can do it, go do it, you know. And there are examples to help people along who need a bit of guidance, but primarily it's about empowering us as gamers to just do our thing again, you know, and let you just do what you like, you know, it's, uh, it's all cool. Yeah, that, that's, <laughs> you know? that's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, great, thank you very okay. much. Okay, that's, that's, that's great. Thanks, thanks for talking to me. Thanks Cheers. 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 <laughs>